Good evening, everyone. Um, again, I apologize for the technical difficulties getting this set up. We thought we had it, and then it went away. And um, <laughs> just a couple of fixes that haven't even entirely worked. But anyway, thank you for coming to our zoning forum this evening. I'm Lisa O'Donnell, current chair of the planning board, and other members of the planning board are here with me, Simone Early, Shelley Bradbury, Judd Lane, Peter Levasseur, and Matt Greco. Thank you folks for coming this evening. I'm gonna start off with a few introductory remarks, and then Courtney Lewis from the Metropolitan Area Planning Commission will walk us through a brief project update and then discuss property uses, which is the main topic of this evening's forum. After Courtney's presentation, we'll take a few minutes to answer questions that attendees may have, and then we'll move into the interactive exercises to help gather your input and feedback. Tonight, we're going to spend, I'm sorry if this keeps going in and out, I don't know how to do any better. <laughs> Tonight, we're gonna spend most of the time focusing on property uses in town. These apply to the land and to buildings. These typically include residential, business, industrial, and public or municipal uses. First, I wanna provide some background and context for this whole project. The planning board is an administrative board, not a policy board, since our charge is to interpret both our own zoning bylaw and state regulations on zoning and land use in Mass General Laws, chapters 40 and 41. Our duties as established in the general town bylaw include planning for the town, making recommendations to the town, and studying issues and questions referred to the board by the town. But it's the residents of town through town meeting who establish what is in our zoning bylaw. So town meeting defines our land use policies and the planning board oversees their application. Part of our job, therefore, is to do exactly what's happening in this current project and in these forums and our other outreach efforts and that is to understand what residents want to see or not see in our zoning bylaws. We use your input to propose changes to the bylaw that reflect the wishes of the residents, hoping that you, the residents, will in turn approve these at town meetings. So we are working on this project in this capacity, interpreting the wishes of residents to propose changes to our zoning bylaw. In May of 2021, town meeting overwhelmingly supported an article proposed by the selectmen imposing a temporary moratorium on the change of use of residential or open properties to business or industrial use. When I say overwhelmingly, it's because zoning articles require a two-thirds majority, and because if the moderator is at all uncertain of the vote, he will call for a count. He was able to simply declare a passing vote for this temporary moratorium when it was first voted, and at each of the two subsequent votes that have extended it in May of 2022 and in November of 2023. So clearly the moratorium has been well supported so far. The language in our bylaw for the moratorium best describes the issue and I'm going to read this part of it directly from the bylaw. I quote, the purpose of this bylaw is to temporarily slow the rate of business and industrial development in the town so that there can be an opportunity to study the impacts of such development and determine how best to address it in the future. The town of Essex is relatively unique insofar that it does not have traditional zoning districts such as residential, business, agriculture, or industrial, and it does not have a use table in its zoning bylaws. While the town has, been, has primarily been a rural residential community, in recent years there has been more interest in bringing business and industrial enterprises to the town. While town officials are in favor of growing the town's business and industrial bases, new business and industrial enterprises are not always in harmony with existing residential uses. This has led to an increase in complaints about concerning noise, traffic, and other impacts from such uses in residential neighborhoods. Given the rate at which new business and industrial development has been occurring, time is needed to study the issue and determine whether there should be amendments to the town zoning bylaws to address these and other issues." End quote from the bylaw. So by approving this temporary moratorium three times, residents have told the selectmen and the planning board that yes, they want bylaw updated and better protections in place for residential areas. Quoting another portion of the moratorium language in the bylaw, this charge is laid out very directly. 
and I quote, during the moratorium period, the planning board, board of selectmen, and other town officials shall review and address the impacts of current and pending and potential business and industrial developments, and they shall develop a plan to mitigate future impacts of such developments on the general health, safety, welfare, and quality of life of the residents of the town of Essex, which may include but not be limited to the presentation of suggested bylaw amendments to a future town meeting, end quote. So we've started this undertaking by first implementing some changes that will facilitate any updates, including reorganizing the bylaw at l in last May, and some other steps last November, including creating a general use district. And now we're ready to turn towards understanding which uses are appropriate in which areas of town. This will help us propose additional districts in town. The two issues that we want to explore in this forum this evening are first, what property or building uses should require special permits, and we'll talk about what that means in a bit. And second, how use categories might be broken down to allow us to perhaps allow some commercial uses in residential areas while not allowing others that might be more disruptive. To that end, we want to create a more detailed use table to help us in this process. So updating our use categories and special permit uses will be the focus of zoning articles at this May's annual town meeting. <clears throat> Courtney is going to discuss all these uses, use types in more detail, but I wanted to explain that this is the next necessary and logical step in updating our bylaw before we can turn to the exercise of actually drawing and proposing any new districts, which we hope to work on over the summer and fall and bring to fall town meeting in November. So I will turn it over to Courtney now. Thank you for your patience with all our technical difficulties, but I think we're finally underway. Good evening, everyone. My name is Courtney Lewis. Uh, I'm a senior planner at the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. I want to start by first just apologizing for my uh, tardiness. We had a very difficult time uh, getting in from uh, downtown this evening. Um, I am joined this this evening by my colleague Jiwan Park, who has worked with me on uh, alongside with alongside me uh, on this project uh, and has contributed greatly to uh, the work uh, as well as the planning board and the select board. Um, so I would just want to note that this uh, this night's uh, presentation is being recorded and will be posted so that anyone who wasn't able to attend uh, this evening would, will be able to review at their leisure and um, also um, submit comments. So here's a quick look at the agenda for this evening. I won't um, delay us uh, much longer, um, but as Lisa said, um, this project has uh, really uh, unfolded in um, uh, this this project has really unfolded in in three phases uh, the first two phases um, we started off with a zoning diagnostic we looked at the the town's existing zoning bylaw uh, we asked uh, um, the the community and residents, as well as municipal staff, their thoughts and opinions on the town's current uh, regulations. Uh, we gathered feedback, and from that point, we ended up uh, coming up with a series of recommendations. In phase two, as Lisa also mentioned, um, we, uh, as a first step, we reorganized the, the order and the structure of the bylaw and uh, we're currently in phase three where we're looking at specific amendments in each section of the bylaw. Uh, here is a list of the uh, key recommendations from phase one. Um, we, <clears throat> we um, uh, at the beginning of phase two, we had initial conversations with the planning board and the select board about uh, the approach and the priorities for um, making updates to the bylaw. Uh, and then at the first community forum, we also uh, solicited feedback from, 
from residents uh, to to gather um, to gather their thoughts on how the planning board should pri prioritize making updates and amendments to the, to the plan uh, to the zoning bylaw. Uh, we ended up with this list uh, and uh, uses, which is what we're discussing this evening, was top of the list, along with site plan review, uh, looking at ways to better enforce the, 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 the bylaw, as well as special permits, which is also a topic of discussion for this evening. We, um, we talked about uh, uh, codifying or uh, 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 making the general use district offic an official zoning district within the town, uh, updating uh, definitions, looking at opportunities for more diverse and affordable housing options, and also looking uh, preserving those um, unique uh, attributes that several uh, residents express are what make uh, Essex such a special place. Um, <clears throat> at the beginning of phase three, we have done a lot of um, good work. Um, as I mentioned, we started out by reformatting the existing zoning bylaw um, with no changes to the existing language. It was simply to um, um, set the town up to be able to add uh, an update at at their own pace, uh, with a more organized and structured, in a more organized and structured manner, uh, we also um, made updates to site plan review, which I'll discuss in just a moment. Uh, we formalized the general use district, and we uh, consolidated and updated several uh, of the definitions that are currently listed in uh, the zoning that are listed or weren't listed in the uh, bylaw. So we started out by uh, restructuring things. We um, moved from having um, uh, 16 sections of the bylaw and consolidated some of those things and rearranged others. Um, that's all um, noted in terms of uh, former, lo former locations of information in the uh, current uh, adopt currently adopted bylaw. Uh, we also made changes to site plan review. Um, and uh, just as a refresher, site plan review is a, a process that requires uh, a public meeting uh, before the planning board for specific projects that take place in the, in the town, as well as uh, changes to um, a property. Um, and the planning board, when they're looking and, and making their assessments of uh, these projects, look at things like parking, lighting, uh, how the site or uh, is, is accessed. Um, the planning board has the authority to attach conditions to, to, um, to site plan review uh, for a project, but, um, but it, it's generally to help minimize any negative impacts. Um, and <clears throat> uh, the most significant change with the uh, re updates to site plan review um, require an, abu an abutters notice to uh, inform residents of, um, that a public hearing was taking place uh, when a project um, including a, a change of use, a change of use including buildings or or land uh, was taking place. Um, in terms of formalizing the general use district, um, some of you have seen this graphic um, several times now. Um, when we first started, the town had uh, three established zoning districts. Two were uh, residential zoning districts, the Konomo Kino Point um, residential districts, uh, and then the downtown, uh, the, the downtown zoning district. Uh, outside of that, um, approximately 98% of the town uh, was not 
did not lie within a, a formalized district. Um, so by adopting the, uh, the general use district, uh, it allowed the, the town and, and the planning board to uh, look at and improve existing uh, regulations. Um, it's important to note that there were no uh, changes to uh, permitted uses in this area. Uh, it's simply uh, uh, officializing it and allowing uh, the town to be able to uh, include it in the official zoning map. Can I just interrupt one sec, sure. Courtney? The, the important thing to remember about the general use district is, as Courtney said, that didn't change any of the permitted uses in the general use district. So um, that's everything. And the general use district now allows um, residential, business, industrial. So um, even though it's a formal district now, Essex really hasn't changed on the ground. Um, we. Uh, Another uh, update that we did, not only for the general use district, but for um, the, the other uh, established zoning district was set up a, a purpose statement and intent for each, uh, each district to provide um, guidance on the, uh, the, the, uh, the type of uh, development that would be appropriate. Um, and the, the purpose of the, the general use district was to establish a flexible base zoning district that, as Lisa just, just mentioned, allowed for uses that already existed, uh, including residential, agricultural, uh, commercial, and uh, some light industrial. Um, and then, uh, get, but also gave the town an opportunity to, uh, co uh, to integrate new uses um, or um, uh, through, oh, to ensure that um, uses uh, were cohesively integrated through site plan review um, or through issue um, uh, through the special permit process. Can I interrupt again? Sorry, Courtney, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, something else that's important uh, that formalizing the general use district does for us in Essex, um, where we haven't historically had uh, use districts, is that if we work in the next year or so to um, develop residential districts, uh, we'll be able to essentially carve those residential districts out of the general use district and leave um, anything that's not taken into a residential district in the general use district. And what that does is um, leave us with a general use district that still allows uh, commercial uh, and, in, and industrial uses. And that will um, make it possible for us not to have to actually draw commercial or industrial districts, which is what you see in a lot of other towns is that there are commercial districts, industrial districts. That would be really hard for us to do on the ground here in Essex because of the way the town has organically evolved over the years and the fact that even in our industrial and business areas, there's a lot of residences. So it would be, um, I, I personally would feel really um, challenged to be able to draw an industrial district on a map, call it an industrial district, and know that I've drawn it around a half a dozen homes or a dozen homes or something like that. So having the general use district is our base district. It's, exists, it's what exists right now. And if we do take residential districts out of it, what remains in it is exactly what is on the ground today. So um, that's, I think, an important point to understand because people, when you talk about drawing residential districts, people say automatically, well, where are you going to put the commercial district? Where are you going to put the industrial district? And the point is that we don't actually have to do that. We can just start to look at areas that are appropriate to be residential districts without having that conversation around making commercial or industrial districts because essentially everything is that now. So, sorry. Um, um, another <clears throat> another update to the bylaw was definitions. Um, uh, the existing definitions were consolidated into one section of the bylaw. Uh, some of the uh, some of the definitions were updated to better to clarify uh, 
to, to provide better clarity in terms of use and uh, describing um, uh, specific measurements. Um, there were also uh, a few uh, uses that were um, that appeared in the zoning bylaw but were not currently defined. And so uh, um, through town meeting, uh, 12, defini 12 definitions or terms were added, seven were updated or amended, and then one which was, uh, which was a, a term that was, uh, I, I think it was just outdated, a bit antiquated, uh, was removed from the, the language. Uh, in terms of goals for future bylaw amendments, as Lisa mentioned, uh, tonight's conversation as well as, um, looks, uh, looks at um, expanding uh, uses and standards in the bylaw, uh, expanding and providing uh, greater clarity for principal uses, looking at what what would uh, be appropriate accessory uses to some some principal uses and structures, um, and and also updating the existing uh, special permit uh, use categories, um, adding some language to provide better clear, uh, to provide better guidance uh, for the planning board who reviews uh, special permit um, applications. And um, and also looking to looking at at um, things that should be considered um, as as a special permit uh, category. Uh, and and as Lisa mentioned, uh, the hope is to uh, move closer to formalizing uh, possibly residential zoning districts for a fall town meeting. Um, and I'll. Uh, my colleague Jiwan will talk a little bit about um, a series of exercise, exercises that we've uh, done throughout the process to, uh, to help uh, guide us in that direction. <clears throat> so um, in um, current uh, uses are, are located in section six dash four of the, the bylaw, um, our, our approach and recommendations to updating the section include um, updating the, the list of permitted, permitted issues. I think currently there are four uses listed. Um, they're very general, very broad, um, and not very specific at all. Um, not only uh, introducing new uses, but also establishing standards that will help uh, better regulate, but also safeguard and protect um, um, neighbors from um, from anything from any negative impacts from of of, of current or proposed uses, and also uh, including and updating definitions that. Um, actually define what a use is and, and is not. Um, we, uh, are, we wanted to help establish a more logical structure by, uh, and a, a better way of organizing uh, principal and accessory uses and structures um, by not only um, by, by organizing things um, in, in terms of a use classification, a use category as well as a use type, and um, I'll provide some additional uh, details on what each of those uh, categories mean in just a moment. Um, we also looked at uh, unifying, uh, organizing all the uses, consolidating them into a unified table so that it's easier to compare and contrast uses, uh, what's what's permitted by right, what uh, is permitted with uh, special conditions, and uh, what uses currently require a special permit or, or site plan review. So this is the way we've proposed to organize the, uh, the uses. Um, when I note, um, 
so we would start uh, by broadly by use classification, uh, noting, um, for instance, a residential use, but then being more specific both in terms of the intensity of the use and the characteristic, uh, as well as any standards that may need to be put in place uh, for a specific use. Uh, so residential uh, is broken into household living and group living, um, and that uh, those would be considered a use category. And then uh, within those categories are subcategories that um, that look at uh, use types. So, for instance, uh, a single family uh, detached home or uh, a multifamily uh, dwelling, uh, looking at uh, accessory dwelling units, and also identifying and clarifying existing language in the and the bylaw, um, such as the seasonal cottages, which are um, unique to um, the Konomo Point area. Um, and then breaking the, uh, showing the distinction between um, uh, household residential uses and then uh, group home uses, things like nursing homes or uh, uh, assisted living facilities um, and, and doing that within each of the uh, categories of uses, so residential, commercial, and industrial. And um, you'll be able to see how uh, we've started to organize some of the possible uses uh, on uh, the posters in the back once we uh, transition to the exercises. Uh, we've also listed um, all of the existing zoning districts uh, along the um, along the top header row, uh, so the Southern Konomo Point uh, District, uh, the Central Konomo Point uh, Zoning District, the Downtown District, as well as the General Use District, and then under each district, specifying whether a use is permitted by right, allowed. Uh, subject to special conditions or standards, um, whether um, a use requires a special permit or is, uh, is prohibited. Um, and as, as Lisa, Lisa mentioned, the, the hope is to, uh, at some point, start to look at resi residential zoning districts. Uh, in our, at the last forum that uh, the town he held, we did an uh, a mapping exercise that looked at different place types um, and as we started to um, go more in depth and add additional details to some of those place types um, uh, we've come up with uh, these preliminary uh, titles for a possible residential district noting uh, different characteristics um, and dimensional qualities in each. Uh, so, uh, and those being rural, suburban, and, and village uh, in terms of residential districts. Um, so uh, this chart shows the town's existing principal, uh, uh, the town's existing permitted principal uses uh, and then some of the uses we're uh, proposing be added or uh, to, to the table of uses. So as I mentioned, looking at um, residential uses and then uh, breaking them down into family or household uh, um, residential uses versus group homes uh, or group living, um, and then the distinction between um, each of those uh, subcategories. Courtney, I just want to mention here when we look, because you have a series of tables coming up which are, are helpful because they're showing what is in our bylaw now for um, defined uses. 
and then um, a list of uses that we're likely to propose. What we're going to be looking for is feedback on some of these uses to see what we actually bring to town meeting in May to help expand these categories. But the other thing in looking at these tables to keep in mind is even though the heading says permitted principal uses, we're talking about uses that are permitted either by right, by special conditions, or not, or, to listed conditions. So some, some are by right, some are, there are other conditions that apply in the bylaw, and then there are also special permits. So just as an example, on the list here um, of proposed updates under residential uses, things like single family, two family, those are by right. But when you get down to nursing home, that's already in our bylaw as a special permit. So when you see these lists, it includes all of the uses and doesn't at this point in these lists define which are by right, by, sta by certain standards and which are special permits. So um, when you see other things listed here, just because they're there doesn't mean it's by right some of them are special permits because you're going to see adult uses and it's not <laughs> not a by right thing yet so um we're looking at also adding uh new categories of uses so currently the the bylaw does not have any specific public institutional or civic related uses uh identified um <laughs> um so uh some of the uh, subcategories for uh, potential or proposed new uses include um, things like municipal facilities, uh, like the public safety building or, or school buildings. Um, town hall would be considered in that category as well. Uh, community and cultural facilities. These are things like religious institutions um, or uh, uh, educational facilities, both public and private schools, um, healthcare, um, parks and parks, open space, uh, conservation and recreation, uh, transportation uses, as well as utilities and uh, public utilities and and services, uh, which are are not don't have their own separate category within the existing bylaw. Uh, and it, <clears throat> one, of the, uh, one of the categories of uses that we've received the most comments about uh, were related to, uh, bit, uh, to commercial uses. Uh, currently, um, uh, bit, there's a business use and a hotel slash motel use listed in the existing bylaw. We're looking at expanding that to include different types of business uses, um, including uses related to agriculture, um, food and beverage services, lodging. Um, as the bylaws currently define, a nonprofit is considered a business use. Um, office, office professional and, and personal services, so things like banks, uh, hair salons, um, funeral homes, um, recreation and education, uh, recreation and entertainment uses, things like um, shooting ranges, uh, sport venues, uh, uh, re retreat centers, uh, as well as retail sales, um, and then vehicle and equipment uh, business uses things like car washes, um, commercial, um, a vehicle, boat, or equipment storage or sales, um, which, and, and a lot of these uh, subcategories have come uh, one, one way or another through comments or feedback from what we've heard from the community. Uh, and I, the last category of additional uses is industrial, there, which we've also received uh, a number of comments about um, the current bylaw lists two different industrial uses, class A and class B. But other than the, um, 
uh, specifying uh, uh, dimensional standards, uh, dimensional uh, regulations for each, there isn't much distinction or um, uh, in, as in the existing bylaw. So we're looking at um, providing uh, language that really starts to um, put a name to what what the town means when it when it says um, uh, industrial uses, including manufacturing and uh, processing, scientific uses, uh, uh, like research facilities, uh, storage, wholesale, and warehousing, as well as waste and salvage, um, things like uh, com composting facilities. Uh, under the current zoning regulations, a lot can be used for um, a residential, a commercial, or an industrial um, use if it meets uh, the, the dimensions specified in the zoning bylaw. Um, uh, and the, the thing, uh, the, the issue is that with few or no restrictions, um, that means that um, you could have a commercial use right next door to a residential use. Uh, you could have an industrial use right next door to uh, a school or an institutional use. And so to help bring a bit of structure and order and just to ensure that, um, that uh, property values are uh, protected uh, and that quality, quality quality of life for residents is not negatively impacted. Um, that um, we're proposing to uh, tighten up re re regulations uh, and provide additional language to specific use uses. <clears throat> Uh, so we've talked a bit about special permits, um, and basically a special permit is a, a tool that can be used to help regulate land uses that aren't uh, explicitly prohibited in the zoning bylaw. Um, they may or may not be compatible with a neighboring use uh, or um, affect the, safe, the safety, health, or well-being of a neighbor. Uh, it's not to say that it's a negative thing, it just means that certain considerations uh, should be thought about before uh, establishing or, or permitting that use. Uh, an example could be um, someone who has a recording studio in their, in their home, um, which isn't necess necessarily a bad thing, but uh, a condition or a standard to that use could be that the, the applicant would be required to uh, install soundproofing or uh, there are certain hours of operation um, in which they could operate their business. Um, um, so in term, uh, uh, with a special permit, um, an applicant, if, if a use requires a special permit, an applicant is not allowed um, uh, to have that use unless they uh, seek uh, or obtain permission from the Special Permit Granting Authority. Uh, in Essex, that is the, the planning board. It's different in different communities, but here in Essex, uh, it's the planning board. Uh, and in terms of like... Um, Kind of a scale of uh, of, um, of of regulating. Uh, at one end of the spectrum, you have by right uses. These are things that you you are permitted to to do, or uh, or uses that you're permitted to have by right. Uh, and then at the other end of the spectrum, you have prohibited uses. Um, as I mentioned before, site plan review. Um, um, allows the planning board to review certain um, proposals or uh, whether it be a change of use or uh, changes to a structure. 
and um, but generally, um, um, they they can't deny um, a partic th that particular use. Um, with special permit, the planning board or the special grant granting the special permit granting authority. Uh, has a bit more discretion and uh, can impose additional conditions or regulations on on a use and again that isn't uh, that's just to ensure that whatever that use is is not um, a, a disturbance or a nuisance to uh, a neighbor or to the community as a whole I just want to add on special permits is that um, a special permit decision is written and gets recorded with the property's deed at the registry. So it's a very enforceable and sort of official document. Special permit also allows the special permit granting authority, which as Courtney said, is the planning board here, to deny a use, to deny an applicant if in the estimation of the planning board um, that use would be detrimental or hasn't met the requirements um, that are in place in the bylaw for that particular use. So there is a, a more teeth in special permit than in site plan review. Site plan review is more literally a review. A special permit is actually an official permit that needs to be um, written by the planning board and um, given to the applicant. <coughs> Um, as as Lisa, Lisa mentioned, um, a special permit application requires a public hearing, um, a notification to the public of that hearing, and then uh, a decision rendered by the planning board. Um, it's subject to legal appeal um, and is usually granted if, if certain requirements are met. Um, and as Lisa said, not... Um, found to not be um, in conflict with public interest. Um, uh, Mass General Law uh, Chapter 40A, Section 9 outlines the framework for uh, granting or denying a special permit application. Generally, there are three different types of special permits. Uh, a, uh, a bonus, Bonus, review, and relief. Um, um, a special permit that, uh, an example of a special permit that allows uh, a bonus typically um, would allow um, additional development, uh, increased density or height of a use above the, the standard. Um, with review, it would look at uh, negative impacts um, and assess things like traffic um, to a particular area. Um, and then uh, relief would be um, a use that is, is waived or um, would allow uh, modification of specific standards. Uh, and that would be in the case of uh, um, uh, of a very specific uh, site, site specific factor or constraint that would, um, that um, ensuring that it would, um, that the use would not negatively impact or would mitigate um, a negative impact. Um, so I wanted to show this example, which really starts to get at uh, some of what uh, Lisa was talking about earlier with establishing the general use district. Um, so by um, establishing standards for specific uses, uh, the town would, would help mitigate um, any potential negative impacts created by proposed use, a proposed use. Um, that would include things like traffic, um, increased noise, or pollution. Um, and um, it would al allow um, for the bylaw to note whether that use would be allowed by right, um, by special permit, with site plan review, or prohibited.
Um, in terms of uh, special permits, uh, the, the, there's a list of existing um, special permit uses in the current bylaw uh, that range from airport and uh, airports to um, marijuana establishments. Um, we've also included some additional categories to consider um, and we're hoping to gather feedback on whether or not um, residents feel that a proposed use would uh, should be should require a special permit and those include residential commercial and industrial uses so um, um, I am going to, uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, um, at the previous forum, um, we had the um, residents uh, do an interactive mapping exercise that uh, was both in person and online. And we gathered fee feedback on different place types uh, that um, a, a set of draft place types that had been developed based on um, the very first uh, engagement exercise where uh, if you participated, we, I think we asked uh, you to provide uh, a series of descriptive words or characteristics that best define um, your, your neighborhood or, or the town in general. And we use that feedback to start to craft uh, language that would better describe and define um, specific areas of town. Um, and this was, uh, we did this not only, um, we, we also uh, took this approach in order to um, be able to provide the intent and purpose statements for uh, existing or proposed uh, zoning districts in the bylaw. Uh, a place type uh, usually uh, has uh, a few different components that um, that's taken into consideration. That's uh, land use and the built form. Um, so those things that contribute or enhance the character of the community, uh, as well as mobility and infrastructure, things like uh, existing roads, whether or not um, there are sidewalks present, um, or there's uh, sewer infrastructure that can support uh, specific development. Uh, and then, of course, quality of life and uh, resilience, um, providing the community with uh, parks and open space, as well as uh, environmental protection um, from flooding um, and uh, also uh, protecting uh, and safeguarding uh, conservation areas. Uh, and so I'm going to hand it off to Jiwon, and she's going to talk a little bit about the, the results from that mapping exercise. Yeah, thank you for Yeah, uh, it's a little low, but yeah, we can hear you. I turned it off because it was doing feedback. Give us one second. Uh, I'm not in the zone. So why don't you turn the speaker on and try it? Okay, it's on. Juan, can you speak just to see if we can get you amplified here? I'm trying. It's on. Yeah, that's all. That's all that's coming through. Hmm? So, we, we can't hear you yet, Duran. <coughs> Not the it's the speakers. Hmm? Which? Yeah. 
Recording recording Okay, go ahead and speak. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Can you join the session? For me, go to. I think I'm the start the presentation. If, um, yeah, because you're running that for these people. Okay. Yes. Coming through that? It can, it can. Uh, uh, speak again. Uh, hello? 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 Yeah, I'll just turn this game. Uh, hmm? Like this? I'm trying to get the volume to come up on this. Just keep talking, Juwan. That's fine. I'll, I'll um, take it. Uh, so basically, we um, we started out with um, with eight different place types. Uh, three were were um, residential place types, neighborhood that we called neighborhood one, two, and three. Um, with one being more uh, of a, having more of a rural character. Neighborhood two being um, uh, more suburban, and neighborhood three um, being those areas that are closer to um, the center of town or had more of a, a village characteristic, um, which included a, a slight but not intense uh, density, um, slightly higher but not um, intense density. Um, we had two commercial categories that looked at um, uh, business uses um, th that included um, more general business, but also neighborhood business businesses. So um, those businesses where uh, people potentially operated out of their home, home occupations, or um, neighborhood scaled. Um, businesses that would essentially meet the everyday uh, needs of community members. Um, we had an open space um, place type um, that we characterize as being appropriate for uh, not just uh, parks and recreation, but also uh, potential areas to conserve and preserve um, that may or may not uh, have a, like be officially, have an official designation of uh, protected open space. And then um, digging deeper into the mystery of industrial uses with, um, which currently are uh, ind industrial A uh, and B. 
So with that, we uh, came up with a series of key characteristics and considerations for each place type, uh, as well as put, <clears throat> potential or um, kind of consistent themes of uh, principal, principal land uses, um, and then thoughts on what could be potential secondary or accessory uh, uses in those areas as well. <clears throat> and, and we did that for each one. Um, and uh, this is, um, this shows the results of the interactive map. Um, so for um, uh, the neighborhood one place type, which was the, um, the more um, rural or agricultural place type, um, People, um, we asked folks to uh, place a pin in specific areas of town that displayed some of these characteristics or areas of town um, with that they would like to see pres preserve some of those qualities. Um, for neighborhood one, there were 158 votes. Uh, neighborhood two, um, which are, which uh, from this map um, tend to be consolidate, consolidated more along um, major road, arterial roads in the, um, in the town and, um, and then neighborhood three, which tend to be closer to um, uh, Main Street. Um, of course, there were a number of uh, open space pins uh, that were um, dropped on the map as well, and these ten tended to be um, uh, neighboring and existing uh, protected uh, open space or um, a protected open space. Um, and then there were um, 35 pins that looked at business um, where uh, folks place the business place type. And I, that, um, one of the patterns we saw is that, that um, those, those pins were dropped near a lot of the existing um, business uses up in town along Western Avenue and Southern Avenue. Um, and of course, closer to um, or adjacent to main thoroughfares. Uh, there were also a few um, industrial and light industrial pins throughout the map, um, which indicate some of the existing uses in, in those areas as well um, for uh, industrial and limited industrial. Uh, and in total, we ended up having um, uh, 345 comments uh, and pins dropped, um, which uh, G1 went through and organized and pulled out some of the um, some of the a, a few quotes um, and some of the characteristics that were submitted in describing these areas. Um, there were, <clears throat> there were several, um, there were several pins and comments that noted, um, uh, um, certain historic features or qualities, um, or, um, that related to not only the housing, but also, um, the town's, uh, ship, ship building history, um, Um, and also um, uh, comments that note um, some of those uh, qualities in terms of walkability and access um, to specific things uh, which were in areas that are actually more walkable in town and uh, people are, can easily access um, things like the library uh, town hall, the post office. 
Uh, and of course, there were several uh, comments noting the uh, both the um, the scenic and uh, environmental qualities of uh, parks and open spaces, but also um, uh, noting social things and uh, future concerns in terms of uh, uh, flooding. Um, there were several suggestions on um, businesses, both existing or uh, areas where uh, residents felt would be appropriate locations for some of those smaller businesses, uh, as I mentioned, to uh, meet some of those day-to-day -day needs, as well as um, neighborhood businesses that could be better integrated or that are currently integrated uh, in close proximity to residential existing residential uses. Um, there were um, comments about some of the industrial uses, um, both existing and uh, comments on areas um, that could potential that could be adjacent to uh, potential new uses that could be adjacent to existing industrial uses for both class A and B. Um, and with that, um, I'm gonna stop talking. Uh, but I wanted to, I don't know if the audio is any better, but uh, G1 really did the, the in-depth um, work on going through the comments from the place type exercise. So I wanted to just see if she had anything else to note about uh, anything. Uh, yeah, I, a little. We can't. Can you hear? No. No. Okay. No, we can't. We can't hear. So. Okay. Let, right. Let's move forward with questions and then the exercise so that we can keep things moving and because um, the, the whole point is to try and get some input from residents too. So. Um, does anyone have any questions at this point about any of the material we've covered? Because then we're going to get into an engagement exercise that's going to look at um, get your feedback on um, uses that should be added, special permit uses that should be added, and, and you, are you set up for that yet? Or? No. Okay, so go, why don't you set up for that? And if anyone has any questions, I can help with questions while we're trying to get the, um, that presentation set up. Mm -hmm. um, questions, you're going to have to come to the microphone unless you want to yell real loud because we're trying to capture it on the recording. <laughs> Gordon Thompson, 119 Western Avenue. Uh, could you explain quickly again why you are against commercial zoning? <laughs> We're not against commercial. We've had a lot of feedback from people that uh, would like to see commercial limited in their neighborhood. So it's not being against commercial, as I tried to say. Well, well what, what I'm bringing up is I'm an advocate for commercial zoning. And simply there are areas in town, uh, I'll use Western Avenue, I'll take it from Pawn Street to the Hamilton Line. Not counting residents on side streets, but just on Western Avenue itself, commercial outnumbers the residents. And I happen to live at 119 just before Pond Street. I get to count, I've had, we've had up to 12 or 14 trailer trucks going into the home center on a Monday or a Wednesday. So I believe that that end of town is prime for a commercial zoning. And you can leave residents as residential commercial, uh, 
I know from it's happened with me, I sold my second house in town to a commercial and I got quite a bit more than I would have got for residential. So there's a benefit to it. But I just, I've seen too much where it's as it stands, um, somebody could move, come in and buy the house next door to you and put a business in there. And if you had spent, just moved the town the last five or six years and spent six, seven hundred thousand dollars, you're not too happy when you get up in the morning and see a mess next door. So that's why I like to see some commercial uh, districts put together where you know definitely that's where it's going to be. Uh, another pot, another end would be down on 133, just right there with the ice cream, uh, the boathouse, Joe Ginn's place, the, and the pot shop. Uh, well, but uh, I'm just going to try and explain again about the general use district because um, the general use district that we've established is essentially our commercial and industrial district. And anything that, any areas of town that remain in the general use district and are not um, separated out and created, if we were to create residential districts around town, they basically get carved out of the general use district and everything that is not put into a residential district remains in the general use district and the general use district is what allows commercial and industrial properties. So it's, it's, it's a de facto commercial district. Uh, it's not going to be established as specifically commercial um, and as I said earlier, that's problematic for a town that's already been built out largely is to actually try and come in now and draw either commercial or industrial districts because then we're necessarily putting people's homes into one of those districts and that doesn't feel right. The commercial, uh, the general use district that we've already established leaves all of the uses that are currently permitted in place uh, so that properties can be residential, commercial, or industrial without necessarily designating something specifically requiring it as a, a commercial area. Does that, does that help at all? So if my house is in a general use neighborhood, then that would allow uh, commercial use. Like it does now. In the neighborhood. C correct, as it does now. It, it, it leaves intact what's in place now, and the effort would be to find areas um, that, not are, that are not appropriate for commercial or industrial and carve those areas out. Um, the other thing that we're, one reason that we're looking at adding more detailed use categories, which is some of what we've talked about this evening, is that those um, detailed use categories would allow us in particular districts to allow some business uses, but perhaps not all of the business uses. So we could have a suburban um, residential district that allows um, neighborhood stores and say professional offices or banks or something like that. Well, so this is the kind what of- what I'm trying to say to you is the damage has been done. Let's try to stop it and <laughs> just put commercial in an area where it belongs. Well, we do have the downtown district already established, but that's really just the downtown area that um, is, is mixed use by right, so commercial and residential areas together, so. All right, and then my other issue I bring up, I saw it in the beginning up there, was enforcement. Enforcement? When, once you put all of this, all everything together and it's out there for use, who's going to enforce it and how? Because right now we have very little enforcement at all in this town. Ruth? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it, it, we agree it's a problem and it's, it's not something that's going to be solved in the bylaw. Uh, that's a separate issue that's sort of outside the bylaw, but if we don't have the rules, we have no shot at enforcing it. If we have the rules, then we have something that can be enforced when we have the funds and the means to actually have a stronger department to do that. So 
I, 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 I agree, but I disagree. No, because, I, 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 because it, there's it no is, sense in putting this all together if we don't have the funds to enforce what we put together. Right, but that that's simple. <laughs> but, Thank you. but that that's a problem that's solvable by having a you know full time building commissioner or something like that. If the rules aren't in place, then there's there's nothing to enforce. So, um, are there any other questions that people might have this evening as we're still getting set up? Thank you, Ken. Ken Real Two Island Road. Uh, thanks, Lisa, for your great work and the MAPC. Um, I'm just a little confused with, I think, related um, question. So, so we're focusing on residential and designating the residential areas. Everything else is general use. How do the eight different place types then fit into that if we're not going to zone for them? That, that's, the exercise was to understand um, where people saw certain uses in town, but we're not aiming to draw an industrial district or a commercial district, what we're aiming for is to understand where those uses belong in town so that we don't necessarily um, put those areas in a residential district. So the, the, where we see commercial and industrial uses and where people think commercial and industrial uses remain appropriate, those are the areas that we would not proposed to be a residential zone. We would just leave them in the general use district rather than, um, you know, because if you look at where industrial happens at the end of Western and at the end of middle sort of of Southern, it's, it's really hard to actually sort of draw little industrial districts around those areas, particularly since there are homes in those areas as well. But anything that remains not in a residential area, that remains in the general use district, will still have all of those uses, business and industrial, by right. So a developer wants to come into town, industrial, and they're looking at building an open space on John Wise Avenue. He's, he's just as um, able to do that as he would be able to develop a, a site that's already has industrial on it. I mean, wouldn't you want to sort of steer him towards areas in town that are already developed towards that purpose versus necessarily using up open space that the town may otherwise want to leave as such? Right, but that's, uh, there, there's a lot of tools that we can use for something like that. Um, and we can look at, you can draw residential neighborhoods um, by, and that would exclude uh, industrial uses but might allow other business uses. So there's, there's nuance that you can add to this and that's, this, this is the first step in understanding that um, where these uses would go. So it's not, it's not gonna be either all residential or just general use. We have the ability to nuance our residential districts with permitting some businesses but not others. We can figure out which businesses are suitable in certain areas and not in other areas, which is why we're going through this whole exercise of trying to provide more and different categories of business. Because right now we have business, moto, helto, and that's as fine-grained as the exercise gets. What we're proposing is to have more, um, <coughs> more classifications of business that would allow us to say, yes, you can have um, a lawyer's office or, or not, you know, just like a professional office or uh, a retail store, but not a car wash or any of, you know, we can separate some of the business uses by their suitability for areas. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> sort of. Um, we'll get into the exercise. Maybe it'll become more clear. Thanks. Um, well, the, the thing is, it, 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 and your questions are good and valid, it's, it's very complicated to try and perform this exercise on a town that's really been built out already and very haphazardly. So we're trying to sort of go at it in an incremental way to say where are the neighborhoods that are really neighborhoods um, and aren't suitable, are there skinny little streets whatever whatever the issue is that makes them inappropriate for business and it's it's just uh, and we're going to continue to have these conversations uh, to to actually draw industrial areas an industrial district or a commercial district is just problematic in a town that has residences so interwoven throughout so 
that's where the general use district is basically the default position that we're at now and things that remain in the general use district really just are the established status quo. We also have the ability to use um, overlay districts, so there could be areas that remain in the general use district but have an overlay district that is um, just establishes whether it's scenic requirements or perhaps areas that don't allow industrial but do allow business. So those are still conversations that we're still looking to have, but that's important for having these sort of place type exercises to understand where in town people think certain uses are appropriate, which tells you then what uses are not appropriate in those areas too. So it's a work in progress. I get it, thank you. Um, any other questions? So part of the, um, <coughs> yep, go ahead. Good evening, thank you, Lisa, for taking my question. Um, can you explain the business district? What is that as far as zoning is concerned? Kurt Bergeron, 35 yeah. Dodge Street, by the way. We don't have a business district. The, the, yeah, you do. Hmm? We have the downtown, the downtown we have business. the downtown district. Yes, the downtown business district that was drawn up. Right. That, can you explain that and what the zoning implications are to be in it versus not in it? The downtown district was um, drawn to allow mixed use by right. So the Essex zoning bylaw does not allow um, two uses in a building. You can have, with sufficient property, you can have two uses on a property, but um, you typically cannot have uh, two uses in a building and home occupation is excluded from that. Uh, the downtown district allowed mixed use buildings by right that would allow someone to operate a commercial establishment on say a first floor and have second and third floor apartments or something like that. So the downtown district was established one to allow mixed use by right and then the downtown district dimensional requirements are significantly reduced from those in the rest of town with the understanding that in that downtown area, a lot of that area was built out before we had the dimensional standards and pretty much everything according to our baseline dimensional standards is non-conforming. And that made it really difficult for people to make improvements to their property because as soon as they tried to do something, it was immediately non-conforming. So by adjusting the dimensional standards in the downtown district, it gives people more latitude to make improvements and changes on their properties without sort of running afoul of the zoning bylaw and needing to go to the zoning board of appeals just to add front steps on their porch or something like that. So okay. Okay. that was the intent of the downtown district. Okay, all right. So it wasn't established so much as a business district, but it was established as recognizing that this is pretty much, much of our business district. Yeah, it met a certain requirement basically, right? I'm sorry? It met a certain requirement right. of mixed use essentially, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, is that uh, pretty much etched in stone or is that still, that's still part of all this, these phases, correct? The, how do you mean, uh, the, the, in, in the boundaries of the Essex, of the downtown district were established and they're drawn on the map in the bylaw. Is that the question? This, well, this new business district that got drawn out, is that etched in stone or is that still part of all this, this, uh, Undertaking. You're talking about the downtown district, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, that that was voted in 2021, and it is it, it, nothing is etched in stone because everything can go back to town meeting. But that is established, and it's not something that we're talking about as part of um, the conversation around residential and general use district. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Appreciate oh. it. Any other questions? Uh, I hear you uh, talking about residential zones. Any consideration of carving out like a protected area, particularly as we have encroachment of uh, flooding and, and uh, sea level rise over time? That, no, that, that's an excellent question and um, it's something that we're gonna start to need to look at eventually. Um, 
and I, it will be a total non-answer, but we're right now in the process of doing what most towns did in the 1970s by establishing residential districts. So we're in a little bit of a catch-up game, and um, the, the gist of this effort, too, as I, I tried to um, point out in my introduction, is that we do have this moratorium in place that was voted three times at town meeting that has put um, uh, a temporary hold on converting open or residential properties to commercial or business. So by voting that um, moratorium in place three times, the town meeting has basically given marching orders to the planning board and the board of selectmen by association that town residents do want us to look long and hard at our bylaw and see where we can start to make um, improvements that do provide better protections to, to residential neighborhoods. So um, it's a really good point, Jake, and it's something we're gonna need to look at eventually, but we're not, we're not there yet. Any other questions? So um, I'm gonna try and introduce the place type exercise a little bit. Um, I'm gonna have to go to Courtney's computer and I don't know how I got back to the beginning, sorry. Okay, so um, uh, what we're hoping to gather information on uh, this evening is looking at, um, uh, noting that the zoning bylaw has, has a lot to do with not, <clears throat> not just uh, zoning, but also land use, uh, land uses, and looking at what, um, how accurately uh, those uses are reflected uh, in, in the bylaw. Um, in, in addition to uh, the intensity of the, their, in addition to their intensities uh, and whether or not those uses are allowed uh, by right with conditions or uh, by special permit. Uh, and so what we're asking is for, um, on these boards here in the back, there, the very first column to use a series of stickers that have uh, a plus, a minus. Um, Lisa, can you advance to the next slide for me? So we, we would like you to use uh, a sticker that notes whether a, a plus sign, a X, or uh, an arrow, which essentially represents expanding. So um, for if it's a, if it's currently a permitted use, we want to know whether or not it should be expanded to include some of these use types, categories. If it is a, a proposed permitted use, or a con, or a use, uh, or special permit use, we want to know if you think you should exit out, like it shouldn't be on the table at all, um, and then. Um, for the expanded use, um, uh, the, the plus sign would indicate that you approve in adding it as a 
uh, either a proposed use or a proposed special permit use, um, which is specified by the uh, color code here. Um, if you advance to the next slide. Uh, so then the next part, <laughs> the next part uh, is asking you to use uh, a green, a yellow, orange, or red sticker and place it uh, in, in the box uh, that correlates with the existing zoning district. So the Southern Konomo Point uh, District, the Downtown District, the general use district, and these three districts here uh, represent potential uh, residential uh, use districts. Whether or not uh, the proposed use type to the left uh, should be permitted by right with a green sticker, allowed, uh, to be allowed subject to a listed standard, uh, and you can also provide notes uh, and these green areas on post-its on what uh, your thoughts on what that standard should be. Um, uh, for instance, um, maybe it's uh, marina and waterfront uh, boat yards. Maybe you, uh, you're okay with it being in a specific area of town uh, or it being a special permit use. However, the condition that's attached to it um, should be something maybe like it should be screened or uh, if it sits along a, a, a primary road that goes through town. Um, and then the red stickers uh, note whether a, sh a use, a proposed use uh, should not be permitted at all uh, in a specific area. And I'm I'm happy to 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 walk us through that. I know that was, I know it was a lot of information, but we um, I'm hoping that you know you do one or two and you kind of get the the hang of things. Sure. Yeah, it would be kind of like you know it's not like you're not hot or cold on it. Um, <laughs> But you, you may have uh, specific concerns related to the use. Uh, like a kennel, you, you may not uh, be opposed to a kennel being in a specific area. However, you wanna make sure that, you know, it's not near a major water source or something. So you, you're not getting a lot of uh, runoff. Um, they are the existing zoning districts, and um, they, uh, I, I can, um, I, we have handouts that has some additional, has additional information as well. Uh, correct. So um, I'm just going to interrupt here because we want the people who are here in the room to be able to interact with the charts and place markers on them in appropriate spots to let us know um, how you, uh, what, what uses you think should be added and then also which uses are appropriate in which districts that we have right now and the residential types that we're looking at. But I just wanted to let the people online here know that we're really going to be doing this exercise in the room. Um, we will do um, our best to make this available in some kind of uh, um, format that people at home can participate in later and um, get back to us with additional feedback too so that people have more opportunity to um, look at this in detail. It's a lot of information um, to process. So um, anyway, I just wanted to let the people online know that we're going to be doing this in the room here and um, you're welcome to stay on, but we're actually probably going to discontinue the broadcast right for now. Yeah, okay.
Thank you for joining us online. No, thanks. <laughs>